Hello! Hello, everyone. It is uh, the morning. It is, in fact, the morning of Leviathan's release. And instead of that, or in some cases, at the same time as that, we are recording our next Tale of Four Gamers episode. So, hi, everybody. How are you all doing? Hi. Yeah, it's, very well. It's, well, how are you? Mo morning. Who, who decided this? Yeah, this who is a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's shocked. We've got daylight coming in. It's the hottest day of the year so far, and everyone's trying to get their hands on some new griblies. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about games we play because we've played games now. We're going to talk about stuff we've done, and we're going to look at all your community updates after this. Hey, welcome back. So yes, uh, lots has happened since the last update. So this is update three for Warcry, isn't it? Um, we were originally only going to do three, but I think now the idea is to do four. So there'll be one more Warcry. So yeah, welcome to Tale of Four Gamers. Um, we have been learning our way and building our way through Warcry for the last couple of months as a sort of, as a sort of, I guess you'd say, like an, an easy mode after doing the Horus Heresy. The last update we did was four weeks ago. And four weeks ago, we'd all got some stuff assembled. Some of us had started painting. Um, I was probably the most behind in that. I don't know if that's actually changed. But in those four weeks, lots has happened. Um, I mean, the obvious thing that is happening right as we speak is that Leviathan <laughs> is being released. Bobby, you've been actually trying to get a set, haven't you? Yeah, I, I think I've got an order with um, a third-party retailer. With, but... Yeah whether they actually have enough stock or not who can tell so i'm still waiting on uh the games workshop website we're now, and now 40 been... minutes from the release aren't we yeah and i've uh, got another 45 minutes apparently according to the the timer on the the queue system so it's not the shortest queue i've ever been in but hopefully i've secured myself some some new spa shiny space marines well if you don't get it then i don't have a full set because I've, I've assembled stupid fucking models I got a set. Here's my Bulbanid. He's he's an actual plant pot. Put an actual plant in him. He's real. So I don't have a full set. But if if, if any of you don't get it, then you're welcome to pick up my box um, for anything you particularly want. Um, except obviously you can't have this because um, he's going to be on my mantelpiece windowsill. He needs a lot of sunlight. Yeah, it looks great. Very fun. Got a I'm, bit more now. I, I'm really tempted to just so in the Leviathan box, what you get is the full combat patrol of which is the new balanced dish format for Tyranids and Space Marines and then a load of extra models. So I'm tempted to just assemble enough Tyranids to do the combat patrol, which I think isn't that many models. And, and then at least I can try out the combat patrol. Um, but yeah, yeah. So well, that seems sensible. Yeah. And it, uh, for quite a few of my armies, I think I might have something close to the combat patrol. So mm. I'm tempted to sort of add the few models to get them to be the combat patrols. But um, we'll see how that goes. What so for a combat patrol then? Do you need specific things or just a certain number of points? It's a specific. The, this is your army. It'll tell you know the, the oh, it'll be yeah. the, these are exactly the models. These are the upgrades, and it'll have. Um, it's like playing a rival. the rules. Yeah. Yeah. It's have like they a... release the combat patrol lists for every army, or I no. Yeah. Uh, I think it's basically the combat the, the boxes they sell as combat patrols. Yeah will be if you get the leviathan box set as well um it lists when it does its thing in the in the book where it goes for new players it's like a page two pages per army where it tells you about the army and it gives you a page and it gives you a sample force um that's the combat patrol so if you get okay. in, in the leviathan looking at the leviathan book you'll be able to tell exactly what's in the combat patrol and i think they've already released the photos on the front of the new combat patrol boxes which are the same thing. So essentially, what's going to be... Or I don't think all the rules for all the combat patrols are out yet, but what's going to be in each of them is known. Well, definitely, but, be, I should be able to do Eldar at the very least. Yeah, I mean, Gary, the Grey Knight one is like um, five Terminators, five not Terminators, a Librarian and a Dread Knight. Gotcha. And, and, do do yeah. the combat patrols limit you on loadouts? Yeah, like that it's, I have, it's fixed. Uh, yeah, it's a fixed okay. loadout, which I reckon I can still, like, with a couple of swaps or just with picking the right models, I've probably got the thing in the Chaos Marine loadout, you know? My Grey Knights are all Rogue Trader Grey Knights, so I don't have the Dread Knight. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I need to make up a Rogue Trader Dread Knight somehow. <laughs> don't know yeah, what all Dread. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, well, they're getting rid of Dreadnought, so just use a Dreadnought. Yeah. 
Um, so that's uh, so yeah, Leviathan is out. That's what's happening right now. The internet, I'm sure, is slowly melting while we try and record this. Um, <laughs> I've also got the printers running. I am printing my bases. Um, so one of the things I'm going to say because we never actually say this is I'm printing my bases on my new Elegoo Mars Three Pro. Ooh, which actually I got sent a couple of months ago from Elegoo, which is really nice. It's the second printer I've sent, uh, been sent by them. Um, it's really lovely, much faster to use, um, and it's a slightly more compact with a bigger tray. I'm using it to print out the bases for this right now. So I've been setting that up and doing a load of testing with that. Also printed out a miniature for silver paints, which has been quite nice. So, I want to say, so thanks, Elegoo. It's because I haven't had a video where I, usually I would find a video where I can incorporate this sort of thing, and I just haven't had anything recently because it's all been tyrannids and law um so yeah thanks for that i should say what one of the things we did so when they sent me the mars 2 the mars 1 that i had went to your school russ as the school 3d printer and and now of course i have a mars 2 going so there might be another so i, I think it's a nice idea right they, 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 they if they send me a printer i will use it i don't personally have space for many many printers so then we can like donate the old ones to places like that some people, yeah, some people yeah. can learn useful um but yeah so thank you for that that's been printing off some bases which we'll get to in a bit for my gang uh we warhammer fest we talked about last time i went to uk games expo that was really fun uh went as press so i did some press lots of posts i came away with loads of cool stuff um came away with mostly dnd stuff i got the moonstone starter which i'm really excited about um which is this like weird little miniatures game that um uh uses a deck of cards and it has lovely art and the models all look like jim henson models you get like fairies riding goblins and there's a there's a yeah. goblin airship that's an inflated toad and things like that it's it's brilliant so i got that i got dark sector i got a few little games and then i got a lovely goodie bag from element games um which has a load of new stuff to try out some like which is really useful because i really need some new paints uh i've been using this pack of minotaur mm. ones for forever so um so that's really nice thanks to them um other and and yeah so that's that's what i've been up to um what have you been up to for the last last month anything any any fun activities in the world of warhammer i no. went to um <laughs> uh horus heresy event at dark sphere oh yeah um i got i did get chucked out because there was a, there was a list submission <laughs> deadline and i missed it and they were like well yeah. you've been kicked out then um <laughs> so ooh, uh so but yeah, me and nathan went to that yeah three games i think nathan got it uh, had a bit of rough but he landed up playing uh in in two of his three games he landed up playing against the warhound titan um, which is insane it is insane. Is insane but so at first i was like this is ridiculous i, I was like maybe i don't even reapply because it sounds a bit competitive and heresy game is not meant to be like that yeah. and then i think he realized when he got there that actually they were doing it the exact right way nathan bought three contemptors so they, yeah. which is how heresy events work. Nathan bought three contemptors, so they mentally put him in the dick list category. And in heresy <laughs> events, because because there's no best, usually in a heresy event, there's no best general award. It's just loyalists or traitors win. Yeah. There's no advantage to bringing the OP list. So what most good orthogonal organizers will do, will identify all the OP lists and then just make them play each other. They don't get yeah. any more points for it. There's no top tables, but it just means that, or, or at least go around and go, look, this guy's got six knights. Do you want, it, well, is anyone up for playing that so that no one gets a bad game? Uh, so evidently, I think what had happened is that Nathan, because he brought three <laughs> contemptors, someone immediately went, right, you're in the arsehole category. And, um, and, <laughs> and he saw warlords and probably knights and mechanicum all, all weekend. Yeah, so he, um, I, I don't know, I don't know how much he enjoyed it or not. He basically, I think, made it his mission, though, to kill the Warhounds and screw the mission. Yeah. So he killed the Warhound once, and in the other mission, um, he got it down to one hull point remaining um, before right. they ran out of time. Did, did you face any horrific uh, Warhounds, or were you in the nice person category? I was in the, I think I was in the relatively nice category. I had I had three decent games. I had, um, oh, was it, Alex was my first game, which was another Alpha Legion list. Mm hmm um, I think they looked at mine and decided, oh, he's Alpha Legion. But the thing is, I challenged the other Alpha Legion player was how I played him. But there was like, he, I had an Alpha Legion where I used up re Rewards of Treachery for a pair of Iron Circle robots. He used Rewards of Treachery for um, a unit of 10 Fulmentaris. Oh. Um, <laughs> and I had exactly the dice rolls you would expect of me. Um, insofar as I rolled 12 4-plus um, invulnerables yeah. and failed 11 of them followed by then failing three out of four, three plus invulnerable saves, followed by failing six out of six, um, um, 
armor and um, feel no pain saves. So in the very first turn, within his first two bits of shooting, my HQ, both robots, um, and my Exodus, um, so my, yeah, my Warlord, both, my other HQ, and my robots were all dead, um, mainly because um, I couldn't pass a single armor save. And it was just like, ah! And then I had 850 points of um, Thalax, which I put into Deep Strike and never turned up. Oh, so I played no. the entire game with just over oh, two thousand no. points, and then um, yeah, had um, like uh, what was it somewhere in the region about six hundred points wiped off the board in his first round of shooting, mm -hmm. and it was just like oh okay then. But the ridiculous thing was that when we ran out of time, I was still drawing, and it was like it's I'm go I'm not going to win. Let's call it a win for you because it's a friendly narrative event anyway. But strictly speaking, I wasn't losing at the time. <laughs> yeah yeah brilliant uh, we've yeah. got a few more of those books we've actually booked ourselves up haven't we like like um there's quite a lot of events Colchester coming up. In Colchester weeks. next week right yeah yeah Colchester Heresy we've got our fifth edition gaming fifth happening. Edition, so we'll two weeks after that. that um there's a Cardiff Heresy game thing that me and Nathan are going to go to uh for yep. the Imperial Truth and um which is gonna be really fun and then we're thinking about SumpCon in october maybe and let's bring out your I lead at the start of if I can. yeah i want yeah. to go so um heresy hammer the guys who do their videos um they they run events down in guildford which is not far from me and I, I might try and go to the next one of theirs i need to look when the next one is because it sounds like um sounds like they they have a nice attitude to how to run that sort of thing hopefully they do um so i might try and go to along to one of theirs as soon as possible as well cool because um, i think they've got one this summer sometime i need to check it in a minute but cool. yeah well look yeah. that's all that's all the stuff that was in war cry the important thing though is we've done some war cry um <laughs> so i've played some bloody games so uh, i know i that feels like cheating i know how war cry works everyone um, it's definitely cheating. Yeah, Warcry. So I learnt it. I was taught it at Warhammer World by Peachy of the Painting Ooh. Phase, who is a well-known War Warcry enthusiast. Um, so Peachy uh, took me down to the game to Games Workshop, and uh, we sat around at Warhammer World, and we played three games of Warcry. Um, he let me play Chaos Legionnaires, um, and he was playing Dark Oath Savages. That apparently not a good matchup for um for, for him. <laughs> um, so yeah, we played three games. It was really really fun, and it's an interesting game. Um, we played three games of that. Um, I only have this one photo. Um, and then uh, I then played last night. I taught Nathan how to play. So he's uh, we played two games against Nathan, and today I'm going to teach Gary how to play. The interesting thing about it is how incredibly like board game like. It is in terms of like, so you generate the random objectives and victory conditions. There's only ever one, and it is very random. So, so all the games are quite different, and all the games are very much about like deployment and maneuver. Even though, like, because you know you can go around killing people, but really the the the, the breadth of difference between like a weak guy and a strong guy isn't that much. So it's not like you're going to win by, tra you know, smashing everybody. Um, it's about actually about, and a lot of the reactions and things like that are about clever man maneuver. So you, we ended up playing games which are like, you know, one of the games we played with, I uh, played against Peachy was, um, I'm the defender. I pick one quarter. Secretly write it down. I need to make sure that he doesn't have anyone in that quarter at the end of the turn three or turn four. And that's that's the game. That's the only objective. Doesn't matter if I lose everybody. As long as he doesn't have anyone in that quarter, I win. He doesn't know which quarter it is. Um, so he it, knows he's got to try and fill all four quarters. Exactly, basically. and he knows that he needs yeah. to predict based on where I'm moving, where I might be trying yeah. to bluff him into going. And that's the game. <laughs> and actually, you could do it without really doing much um, combat at all. It could all be running around and trying to lead people around. We did one, yeah. one the games we played with Nathan yesterday, one was um, one of the people in my gang is just taking the piss. He's the tormentor. At start of each turn, I pick a tormentor. Um, at the end of the turn, if Nathan's killed him, then he gets two points. If I have him alive, but he's still within six inches of an enemy, I get one point. <laughs> and then each turn, I pick a new tormentor. So, so basically, the game is get that guy. Whole rest of the gang could die. Just don't. I, I've got to get that guy, and I've got to keep him safe, but close to the enemy, so that he can, you know, do that at them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the second game was like. Um, second game was. Uh, stand on the pl there's there's three platforms which are the castle who at the end of each round whoever has the most people on a platform wins that platform and gets a point 
So everyone's trying okay. to knock each other off the platforms. Um, and again, yeah. like, like gladiators with the pugil sticks, like it's it seems like an extremely, really, really simple game, like like which you can't really because all your models are split up at the start and you don't know where they're going to be deployed. You can't really game it that much. But then when you're playing the game, it becomes a really like in the moment tactical game because mm. you're trying to and, and quite a bit like a bit of a lurey psychological one. You're trying to bluff that you're not going there and things like that. Feels like a board game and yeah. really interesting because I was expecting lots of like killing and, and actually it's the combat system's absurdly quick. One of the things that happens is that you don't roll any defense, which is really hard to get used to when someone attacks your models, you don't roll anything. They just because they roll um, a number of dice based on their weapon and then they the, what they need is based on their strength and your toughness. And then it does damage right. and that's that. There's no like separate your, your toughness, your armor is all rolled into one thing. So yeah, it's a very, it's great. It's really, really fast, really, really simple. The setting up can be a bit finickety. Um, like there's a lot of steps of like, now reveal your battle plan, now divide your people into three parts, then put this person down, then roll for priority. Once you've actually got the game going, it's, it's good. So yeah, I've, I've been really enjoying it. Um, uh, Warcry, who knew? Very simple, very fast. <laughs> Much simpler than Kill Team, which I also learned last week. Like Kill Team feels like Warcry, but with a lot more like, it's Kill Team, if, if you've got Warcry at one end of the skirmish games and Necromunda at the other end of complexity, Kill Team somewhere in the middle. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Kill Team has a mission where in combat you're like trading fumbles and hits against each other to see who's left with criticals. And obviously there's tons and tons of actions you can do, like activate doors and pull levers and things. Warcry doesn't have any of that. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah I, I've really enjoyed it. So I've, I now know how to play. I can teach people how to play. I will teach you all how to play. Um, Warcry has been played. Um, but we will, as always, inevitably still get most of the rules wrong. Yeah, of course. Well, there aren't that many rules, to be honest. <laughs> um, Nathan's gang's looking brilliant. He's painted up the two different Skaven teams. Um, he's got a load of Skaven. He, they look amazing. And he's also painted up the jungle gym terrain um, from the two boxes I've got sent. I gave him the terrain to paint up because he wanted a big set of that sort of terrain. Um, and they look really, really good. So we played on his mm -hmm. set of terrain, all looking really nice. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, Warcry is go. Um, we're all we're all playing it. Um, so I guess we'll look at our individual gangs, see what we've actually done. So Gary, what have what have you been up to? So I've been looking at the rules a little bit. Um, so when uh, we went to Warhammer Fest, I blagged this from the judges. <laughs> yes. So, so it's got the like tournament. Uh, um, Tournament missions. Setups. Mm. Yeah, so it's just basically all the different ones. I'm not sure if you randomized or... Mm. So I was looking a little bit at what the what the game is. Um, I finished painting my gang, uh, which was done like in a really three colors and um, based, you know, I got that done and then I did oil washing on top. Yep. I'm really happy with how they've come out. I think the only one which I was a bit disappointed because I, I stuck to the rules that all cloth is orange, all yeah. bits of the, their like weaponry are blue. And then when I got to Mibilor and I applied the rules to her, she basically is all orange. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but that, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, they all came out quite nice. <laughs> and then what else did I do this month? Um, I painted the Shades Pirate Gang. Oh yeah, so we did a couple of, yeah, it's another thing we did, we got a couple of, uh, same day as the uh, official re reveal of the Leviathan box was also the day where they released the Underworld starter set and the Hebman's Curse and the new card deck. Yeah. So uh, Bobby's been trying out the new card deck, Gary's got the Hebman's Curse to paint and I painted the starter set. <laughs> That's how we get through these yeah, things. So I've also, <laughs> I also pre-ordered the starter set, I'm quite excited by the, um, the, the, the guard's new gang you know like it, it's good that they're bringing back the old gangs i just wish there was an easier way to get the cards that's sepulchral yeah. you, that's russ's russ has got his um sepulchral guard there i, the, I don't know if I, they're I own the gang but i don't have the new cards obviously i think I mean, there'll be a lot i don't suppose they're going to release them individually it's I just, think there I'm, might be a lot floating around i'm not going to buy them i'm just going to print them though i'm like i'm yeah. like, i refuse to yeah buy them yeah so i, I figured cards. that when you go to dark sphere it's 32 quid or the box set, I figured, you know, for a second set of this total guard, um, I'm not that interested in the, the and more Stormcast, but I'll well, give them a go. It's only three models to paint, and then it's another gang. Are the fighter cards the same? If the fighter cards are different, you could always, if, if the fighter cards are different, you could print off four new fighter cards and yeah. then just use a rival's deck. 
Well, I could, but it would be nice to have the one that's actually designed to go with them as well. Yeah. Because you know? I actually plan to yeah. use them anyway. I've got a rival stack for them anyway. Yeah. But the fighter cards are different as well. So, for example, the um, Prince of Dust. Prince I think of Dust. Called, yeah. Dust. Mace. I know, for example, his either his um, I think his damage on his mace has gone up. Yeah. Well, fighter cards uh, are easy to print off, awful. but it's hard to print off a rival's deck. They've got a lovely silhouette, haven't they? But it's also they're double sided, so they're not that easy. Um, yeah. Everyone who's got a shield has changed their defense to shield. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Um, basically, there's been a few bumps on damage. And I think then the, the big other change is the objectives. The old objectives for the for for those skellies was really difficult. Like one of their cards was stand someone on every objective, you know, which right. for a gang which is so yeah. slow is impossible. So that's a waste of slot. Yeah. What was really nice about these though was actually assembly. Like having yeah. recently the ones I've done are things like Grisel, Grisel's Arena, which would you needed four hands to do that gang, um, <laughs> and and Velmorn are quite fiddly and really easy to break. These ones were like, um, what was so interesting was almost all of them are just two pieces and a base. Yeah. Like all the models are just two pieces that push together and a base. And yeah. they, they went only, together This so was not even a whole model, it's only half a model yeah. and a base. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was really good. So yeah, we've, we, we teamed up to get enough paint stuff done for all those releases. Because I, um, uh, and yeah, so thanks for that. And uh, thank you. Yeah, and, and Bobby, you're going to try out the rival deck, month. aren't you? Yeah, it seems quite interesting. Um, the way the void curse works, and you, you, your fighters can get cursed, but you can also curse your opponent's fighters. Yeah. And it changes your defense dice and shuts down ranged, which I think is quite interesting. Mm. If you void curse someone else who has a ranged fighter, it stops attacks over th three hexes. Yeah. So, it, and then there's a bunch of different objectives and. You know how the the, the rivals decks are quite expansive, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So it seems interesting, and apparently it's quite. <laughs> it seems like it's quite good for aggressive gangs, and you know I've got vampires. They're quite kind of quite chompy. Fighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being void cursed also sh shuts down your special action. So if you've got something yeah. wrote on your fighter card, you know that you want to activate, like the exile dead, you can't do the pulling the puppet strings ability so you can only move and fight that one guy when he's void cursed you can't activate his whole crew right yeah it's i mean yeah yeah, yeah. well look i mean that's that's there's progress you you gary is now at a point then where you have a fully painted war cry gang and well, all the extras yes, and monsters sorry gang. and all you need to do is play some games which you're going to do today and then you can next time feedback on that um yeah and shade spire's done brilliant um so since we were just on bobby uh, maybe I should ask Bobby. Yeah. You though have also been uh, <laughs> painting. How how are the naked people doing? Uh, I'm getting somewhere with them. They're oh. still far from finished. Oh, I've been they're difficult models. On. I've been moving on with like trying to get all the different. I want to have like different colours on the fabric and mm. some variety in them, so they they don't don't look like you're not painting them orange. No, I, the, I missed the obviously I missed the memo on on orange and blue because I'm the only one who hasn't done the gang. Orange There's still and blue. space there for some orange um, and blue. There are. <laughs> there, I mean, I could. I, I was thinking I could make the the red tab. I was to highlight them up to be more orangey and then <laughs> put them all on like blue hair, watery, watery. But oh, blue hair. I oh could, yeah. Or I could do like uh, blue woad. Yeah, um, and orange the, on ginger hair. Oh, ginger hair and blue woad. Yeah. That, that would be a way of doing it because I haven't done any hair on them yet. Um, there, there's options. Um, Frost, Frost Heart yeah, and Griff Hound Orange, I think, is the colours that everyone has uh, decided are the best ones. Pterodon Turquoise. Watered oh, yeah. down Pterodon Turquoise for me. Wow. <laughs> Griff Hound Orange might be the best, best contrast. contrast paint. One of the best contrast paints. Yeah. Anyway, so sorry. Easy. You've done. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been getting <laughs> distracted with new Horus Heresy things. I bought that new book and the the new Imperial mm. Fist character and the, the librarian, um, and other other projects. I've I've been getting very scatterbrained and just doing odds and ends rather mm. than the thing I'm meant to be painting. But they're, they're looking good. The skin's coming along really nicely. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I still need to do some more highlight passes on them. I think. And they've all got like all the little scars and whatnot. I need to go in and uh, highlight those up, but they're they're definitely slowly getting there. I think ooh. they're they're at that sort of like ugly stage of the paint scheme, 
Mm. You know, when you're, you've been painting, you've got quite a lot done, but there's still so much done that uh, so much that isn't done that draws your eye. Um, yeah, I, th I think a couple couple more paint sessions. I think the main problem is that I'm painting them all as one big block. So, um, yeah. if I if I focused on painting one or two of them, I could have had finished figures. But um, yeah, I've done a few yeah. things like that where it's like, yeah, you paint a load of th these sort of like raggedy cultist models where you want to make them look varied. Because I remember doing all my old chaos cultists like that. And it's almost like it takes a bit of a time because what you're doing is going, right, I've got the pot of red open. Now I'm going to find a different use for it on each model. So he's now a red <laughs> cloak. He's now have red shoes. He's now have a red pouch. And you're going through and in your head, you're trying to think ahead to how many colors you got left that you'll get them finished. Like, and then you end up circling back and doing them again because... You're trying not. You're not doing the thing where you just go right. I've got the pot of red open. They're all going to have red hats. I've got the pot of blue open. They're all going to have blue cloaks. You're doing the opposite and trying to paint by numbers in the wrong order. Okay. Yeah. 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 But I think that's yeah. that's pretty fair. It takes a while. Yeah. And then you go. You end up with like five five of the guys by by halfway through five of the guys you've actually painted all the bits and then half of them you you've <laughs> done all the colours but you've, now you've got to find five more. Yeah, it's it's a fucker, but yeah, they're looking really, really good though. And um, maybe by next yeah. month we will you will you will get those last bits done. But yeah, obviously all ginger with blue woad sounds great. Definitely sounds like <laughs> it won't take up loads and loads of time. <clears throat> Russ, so uh, back to the orange and blue. This isn't like an intention. It just happens <laughs> that Gary and Russ were both painting everything orange and blue, um, and then I thought it'd be funny to do the same. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so Russ, you've you've so last time you just had like a test model done. These are looking lovely. Yeah. So I've got. Yeah, I, I'm almost great. done. I think I've got like or maybe a couple of very short painting sessions left. I've only I've only got one more um, finished model, I think, um, which mm. is the the big guy. And he was one of those models where I wasn't planning. I was planning to leave him till last, and then I just got carried away and finished him instead. Cool. Um, just really enjoyed painting the the werewolfy one. Um, Delighted with managing to get the yellow yeah. spots in his eyes in exactly the right <laughs> spot the very first time. Um, I like the he, purple um, purple wounds where his skin's stretching as well is quite nice. Actually, I'm really pleased with it. Um, yeah. I think it just needs basing, obviously. Um, and I realised his bangle on his left arm hasn't been um, coloured yet. Um, but apart from that, I think this particular one is done. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm pleased with the colours I chose for his skin. Um, I think like it's not 100% obvious, but his actual skin just has, in the recesses, has... Um, what colour did I use? The old purple wash. Um, oh, yeah. Drinky violet. Yeah, just yeah. a thin-down drinky violet in all the recesses. So not just in the tears, but in the actual yeah. skin recesses. is, uh, And you can mainly see it on his leg, um, oh. that he's got a little bit of purple in the recesses just to sort of take that colour through as much as possible. Um, but then, yeah, I've, I've, I've got most of the rest of them, most of the rest of the way. Um, like the other, the recovered one of them, he's got all his base coats on, but needs his skin properly highlighting. And I'm going to do a um, uh, some sort of um, glaze on his little bat on his shoulder to turn that to a very dark turquoisey colour. Yep. Um, yeah. And then uh, for most of the rest of them, it's just doing the skin. Same um, scheme as same scheme as the test guy, isn't it? Yeah. Same scheme as the test guy. Um, they all just need um, it's um, Rakarth flesh, then Deneb stone, and then I am um, I, I oh, what's the other dark elf um, sea elf skin tone? The lightest one of those for the final highlight. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it? Um, uh, I can't yeah. Ion, what, yeah. Ion the something. Ant, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they shouldn't take ages. They, I mean, it's just—it's really just the skin on those four regular dudes. Oh, and how are you doing so, with yeah, facing? I'm quite happy Ooh. with how they look. So how are you doing? I was on on the test model. I did do a test base, but I almost—I'm trying to decide now because I painted the last night to um, to photo these for this. I painted the tops of the bases black, but just left the rims grey. Mm. I almost think I prefer. The black base with the white rim to the white base with the black rim, mm. and now I can't decide. So it's going to be something. I, I might just do very plain, um, very plain bases that match my because that way as well it would actually match my night haunt army. Mm. I always so I always um, do grey as rims, and the reason I do it yeah. is because of some old thing like when I was 
studying like the, the general rule of and the same for like desktops of like when you're doing color things usually on a screen to be honest and you want a background that isn't going to affect what you're seeing in color you paint it 50 percent gray not black or white because yeah. that'll affect how you perceive brightness so you, so i always yeah. do brims gray um partly because it means they pop out i can see it's it's uh, a lot of the things it's like to do with not forgetting models <laughs> So I'm like, I never paint rims black with texture on them because it's so much easier for models to blend in if they're black um, or brown. So I always paint them like a pale grey, partly because I think it frames the model a bit better, but yeah. I actually feel like I want them to blend in with the thing they're standing on a lot of the time. So I don't normally like a light grey rim mm. the way you often do yours. But for these, I think it might actually just suit them. I think maybe maybe it's because it matches the top of the their hair will then match the base rim or something mm. like that. You know what I mean? Um, I haven't figured out why I like it yet, but I, I, I haven't, I haven't hundred percent decided, but you know, it's not going to be the end of the world, whatever I do, is it? So. Oh, cool. well, they're looking good. So they're looking yes. well on their way to completion. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to get Great. in a training game with you as well, Russ, so that you can learn some war cry in the next yeah, couple of weeks. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I've, I've been doing some progress. So um, I was, as in the, at the end of the last one, I was like, well, I think I'm, I don't know if I've chosen the right gang um, <laughs> because they're exactly, they're everything I don't like painting. Um, and so I decided to try out some new things and I went through this the way Gary did, I think. I'm still on that track, basically. So the first thing I did was basically do them with underpainting. I did them with, uh, like, so I dry brushed them completely. I dry brushed them bone. I gave them a whole coat of skeleton bone and then I painted them with um, darker skin, uh, very, a couple of different browns to do the dark skin tones, and then all the cloth, all the important cloth, like their hoods and sashes, orange, partly because oh. I realized that it, it, it's the same color I've painted my Mibelor Dark Fang. So actually that blends her into the gang a bit more if I want to use her. Um, and then I painted all the spikes, and basically I wanted to make it look like all their spiky stuff was spider bones. So all the things that look like claws and talons and spikes and mandibles and look have been taken off of some big spider they worship. Um, I, I painted the same blue. So it's, it's blue, dry brushed with a few layers, and then there's a little layer of like some green highlighting on the blue. You can't really see it there. When, I, when they're finished, I'll take some proper photos. But um, I, I, So all their armor is this pale blue, and all their cloth is orange, and everything else is bone and brown. And that was really, really fast. Um, so I've got them yeah. all done. Um, now, uh, I also did some test spider colors. I was actually testing out color schemes, for, testing out all the blues for the Bulbanid um, that I did. Uh, so I tested some of these. Uh, these are like old um, Reaper. Reaper bones, Reaper pointy bones. Reaper bones, D&D yeah. &D giant spiders. So I did some of those, which is useful. But what I haven't done is painted all the spiders yet. Um, I also foolishly, the, the models are so bitty. I've assembled these as the instructions. Having played with them now, I would have made some different decisions. The net guy is the most important guy in my gang. I should have done two net guys. I've got spare nets though. So I'm, I've got, there's so many spare bits on the sprue. I'm kind of wondering if I can use some chaos cult bits and sort of cobble together a few more and use up the weapons. Cause I've got plenty of like raggedy looking running people in hoods. Um, if I put some spiders- It'd be a spikes, change for your raggedy men wearing hoods to not be wearing pink. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so maybe I'll put together a few bits. I actually forgot to assemble a guy. I realized there's one still sitting on the sprue. So when it came to play this, and we'll, we'll figure this out, Gary, <laughs> later, um, I've only got 900 points um, because I'm missing a guy. Do you think it was just bits or something? I, I thought it was just bits. I just missed one. Them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he's going to get assembled. I might make him into another net guy, yeah. you know, things like that. So I'm not there yet. Um, the two things to do, I've still got to assemble that guy, put the spiders all together, and, and then I've got this big bag of spiders that I'm going to do multiple colours and put all over them. I'm also going to print out, I'm printing at the minute, some jungle bases for them to go on. Um, so hopefully, the, the, like the detail and the vibrancy and the colour will come out of the spiders and the bases, and then they'll look like these raggedy people on them. Um, playing with them, really interesting. So I've played with Chaos Legionnaires, i uh, played with Tarantulas Prelude, um, Tarantulas Brood are really interesting. Chaos Legionnaires, as you'd expect, they're really tough and really bashy. They've got a lovely reaction that means that when you end up near them, they can call their mate over to join in. Um, <laughs> and they're really, really strong. Tarantulas Brood are really difficult. You, you, I realized, having played a couple of games now, I realized quickly that, um, yeah, as we suggested, I'm the annoying gang. Like, they're not very strong. <laughs> they're not very killy. Even their leader isn't very killy. They're very weak unless they roll crits. 
Like the normal damage is just like one damage, whereas if they get a crit, it's four or five. But they are fast and their trickiness is quite a lot. So they can keep summoning spiders and the spider swarms are what do the work for you. They've got lots of things where it's like move a guy for a double, you can move a spider as well. It's a free action. Then the spider can attack and he gets eight dice, only hitting on fives all the time, but quite a powerful attack if you get it right. So the, the, it's definitely the game. And then the nets stop people doing things. And there's some spider special abilities that stop people doing. So you have to play it like you're really squishy. You're not going to win on fighting. But if you can, and both games, I was like, I had less people at the end, even though I won. Because I'm definitely going to get killed. But it, it's definitely the gang that are like, right, you can't move. You can't move. If I put this spider here, you're going to have to be stuck fighting spiders. I can resummon spiders. I can, it's, it's that gang. And so, um, so, yeah, I definitely need to paint more guys. I need more nets. And I definitely need as many spiders as possible. So these, these bone spiders might make their way into the... Um, the team i didn't yeah. realize you needed to buy separate spiders you, you don't they come they, on sprue. they come it comes with three or four little spider swarm sprues um but i might okay. just make more yeah with you, you stick those bones onto a base because i put those D D models on bases anyway so yeah and you make more spider swarms um but yeah so that's good so so i'm almost there the, yeah just need the last guy and then base them all they'll all look a lot better when so We've also had some br brilliant submissions from the people on Patreon. So if you don't know how this works, um, we have a Patreon on the channel. I have a Patreon on the channel. There are two tiers. There's a simple, easy tier, uh, which gets you to vote on the book clubs and things like that. And then there is a tier which gets you access to Discord. And uh, on that tier, we also invite everyone to join in on these. And sometimes we get everyone from everything. We uh, It depends how many we get. And hopefully that's a way of keeping people motivated and getting them to try new games like we are all doing. So let's look at... Uh, yeah. let's look at everyone's things so first up we have ben and his ghosts um this is the ochre witch in her court uh these look fantastic i like these i always like it when undead are done in this like monochrome spooky dark scheme looking really really good so uh, very nice and atmospheric yeah it is isn't it yeah um what like models are, yeah what models are these uh, I don't know. Are they just generic? Uh... It looks like a couple of them might be slightly converted, but a couple of them, like the one on the left with the trumpet, I think maybe that's from the kit for the Craven King. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like a mix of different The kits. one with the, the crescent moons, um, I think that might have been that's, bashed no, um, yeah, from that, maybe from Loon Grotts That's Grincrack stuff, yeah. Is it? I, yeah, well, there you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like them. Anyway, either way, they look brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if that's a full Warcry gang, but it um, it works. They look great. Um, next up, we have Gerbil. So people are getting things done. Gerbil Papa has finished his terrifying unmade gang. We saw one of these last time. It was horrific. Yeah. Uh, these yeah. models are the, the weirdest, in some of the weirdest in the Warcry rage. Um, yeah, uh, says, uh, thanks for giving me the motivation to finally get them out of the box after an awkwardly long time. Uh, really happy results for about two hours a mini. And again, going for that sort of monochrome, it's black, white, and red, isn't it? Yeah. Black, white, and red, and let the basing help along. Yeah, they're looking absolutely fantastic. They're lovely, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, I really, really like this gang. Yeah, the, the, the bloody skulls are amazing. Yeah. It works really well. Um, Mazu is back. They have their rats. So this is... Um, a nearly completed game got to base the rim in red as for the others mostly been painting the metallic bits they're, they're getting there not to probably see me focus on these guys a lot and definitely not starting an age of sigma army in a new war time war band with a vanguard box and a death master i've been offered nope 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 so so some progress i'm glad we're pushing you along uh with some of these uh fantastic old models dale i think a new new person is uh doing gloom sky gloom spite gits been considering giving Warcry a go for a while. Uh, they run a Warhammer club in the school they work in. It's like a good way to get short, fast-paced games. It is. Like, none of the games I've played are longer than an hour. It, it's actually really good. Used to play Warhammer Fantasy Battle uh, and like the idea of Night Goblin Fanatics. Uh, so those are the inspiration. Is that stuff again in the photo? Yeah, that is the, it is, that's Grincrack. That's Grincrack's yeah, Lincourt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, getting to get some, some speed paint, which is the army painter equivalent of uh, Contrast. Um, and have done some local one game in Cardiff so far. Um, looking lovely. You can see some uh, Warmer Fantasy Battle equivalents there. Mark, so Mark, again, we're, we're now doing down to the, the most popular of warbands, the, the two most popular of warbands, which is Trees and Lizards. 
Mark, who organised a Kill Team event last week in Nottingham that I went to and learned Kill Team at, so thank you, Mark. Mark uh, has painted their trees. So this is the first of two beautiful tree war bands, Either, uh, you know, angry trees. He went over the exactly 1,000 points. Um, there's also fewer models to paint because he was doing all that Kill Team terrain. Looks really, really, uh, looks really good. They look lovely. This is one of those things, you know, sometimes there's models you just don't like and then suddenly you see how someone's painted and you're yeah. like, oh, those are really nice models. And yeah. that's what that's done there because I don't, normally people obviously paint the wooden parts in like a darker brown, but that lighter brown on them for the wooden parts of the models looks amazing to the point I'm now like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. It it is, you're right it's like i think games workshop picked like the worst season when they painted there so yeah. it's not doing them any favors and then you see all these other people doing them like japanese cherry blossoms yeah, or yeah. you know fall you know and uh you're like oh that looks so much better you're right like these ones look like birch trees or something mm -hmm. Yeah, they're lovely. They're really, really nice. Yeah. It's also the the all the muted colors contrasting yeah, with the absurdly bright green skin is really nice. The people inside look like sap yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. Really good. Yeah, it really makes that that neon pop with everything. The face is amazing. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. As I said, I think I said before that a lot of these. I think some of these are shade spirey models, so therefore they have built in bases already. Really nice. Up next up, we have Will, um, who has been doing the other most popular war band, Lizards. Um, now, my favorite, <laughs> these look great. Again, brilliant basing. Uh, but my favorite thing is how weird and, and dorky the um, bird at the back looks. Nomming people. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the stupid bird is, is my favorite model here. It's great. Also, I like how the guy at the bottom right looks like he's about to play Blood Bub Bowl with that shell shield. Looks like the ball. Yeah. Um, Will's calling these guys the lounge lizards, which are quite nice. Um, uh, and if we're doing a video next month, which we are, there'll be a Skaven warband joining them. Uh, Skaven also quite sneaky, uh, the way they work. Rat ogres are terrifying. Um, I now know from experience. Second tree war band, Rob and his amazing cherry blossom trees. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, these are finished. Lovely. He says busy month, but these, Very. these look amazing. Very nice. Those, um, the, the ones with the fairy wings would make me, they're the kind of models that make me think I could do a small skirmish for Age of Sigmar just to put like a whole bunch of those into an army. <laughs> the sort of thing that makes me think um, I'm, I'm going to only have fairies. They're, they're a relatively recent um, addition, I think. I think right. they came in. Yeah, they look really nice again, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're, mm. they're looking great. Um, yeah, brilliant. Well done, Rob. Uh, Rob's going to try and find a game in London at uh, the Hate Club if he can. Uh, so let us know because we might be around. I can, I can, I'm an hour Warcry teacher. Callum. So Callum, uh, loving the content of the Discord, has um, won a Catacombs box at an Age of Sigmar tournament and is the only person who lost all their games to stay to the end. So after that achievement, they used the Science of the Plane as a jumping off point to start an Age of Sigmar cultist army. Uh, and then there's a load of other cult models in here too. Um, so here is a selection of stuff. Huge selection of models there um, from different warbands, looking very good. Was Science of the Flame in the Catacombs? Was that the Catacombs box? I assume it was, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because you've yeah, got that. Nice well, you know. I love yeah. the guy in the middle. The I think I think he's a dark coat one, but he looks brilliant. Yeah, good. Um, and then we have Asa. Um, so gone for a cult of transcendent pride. They've painted their Arcanites. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is an Arcanites defense Zinch war band uh, painted lovely bright pink and bone with a rainbow um, a rainbow disc. Uh, these look amazing. All of us and stuff looks amazing. Uh, they were painting the Emperor's Children for Heresy, if you remember. Uh, yeah, the skin nice. looks great on the Panzagors. Yeah, the, yeah, the pink skin uh, con contrasting with the bone is lovely. I also like the bone weapon thing. Yeah, the bone weapons and yeah, it's just a really nice scheme. Um, quite unusual to see Zangors in that sort of pinky color but definitely works for them and Zef definitely really zinchy yeah you usually see them be blue but, yeah, yeah. blue and pink yeah. i'm surprised we haven't seen more of it yeah 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 looking great looking great uh ben has got some our second lizard gang so ben's also done their lizards uh, appro hit, approaching their war first dumb warband one of the first full units of squad or squads they've ever actually painted so good <laughs> well, well done. done well done you've got a Looking full good. painted force for something 
You know what I suddenly had a thought looking at these is that um, I've got some a few old 40k slan that a viewer sent me when I did the slan video. I wonder if they'd work in a lizard man gang. <laughs> yeah, frog people. Um, Joe has sent in their Slaves to Darkness. Last minute rush to finish off details and basing, but my Slaves to Darkness group are all finished. It's been a great mini breather project and cool to see how all the different ideas and bands have come together. Um, so they're on Curly Joe 12. Um, and yeah, this is the teal Slaves to Darkness that we saw last week with some lovely yeah. old horses in there. Good colour contrast between the pink and the teal, isn't it? Like yeah. the magenta and cyan sort of colours. What's nice yeah, is they're both like nice. quite pokey, bright, saturated colours and still look a bit weathered and worn. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if the high movement of the horses really impact the game. Yeah. I mean, it is such a movie game. It, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And also like the flying of the disc. Let's try it out, find out. Will, Will Hammer, um, was also at Games Expo. Didn't bump into him there. There's a few people I didn't bump into at Games Expo that I wanted to. Um, but what they've done is, instead of uh, painting their gang, which was the Burbs, Corbus Cabal, um, they've smashed out all the original terrain from the first starter set. Uh, so that's good, because you need that to play. Um, <laughs> I still need to play, paint a set of terrain. Um, mine will be the Red Harvest one, which is like the cl clanky conveyor belts. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah done an amazing set of terrain they're lovely sets the, the stuff that nathan's painted looks brilliant in contrast as well um so yeah looking forward to that well done will um and then yeah. finally we have jenny who has finished their orcs um lots of fun painting a weird wizard two more models nearly done shaman and the boss and they've got some color blocking in on the rest um got to play a game though played against them in an intro game with a friend and they are as tough as bricks and can really put out some hurt as well so maybe this is the sort of war cry you play that where you actually do combat um yeah um yeah so many wounds 167 moon, wounds in this mob uh which is ridiculous actually yeah what's that one two three four five six seven models so that's an average of like 25 20 each yeah. yeah but i imagine it's something like 18 on a lot of the orcs and then there'll be like 30 on that pig um is it like a gold one, uh, yeah it? piggy um a, a rat ogre's 28 wounds and most <laughs> most leaders are about like 18 to 22 yeah so um yeah yeah that's a lot brilliant so there we go that is all the community updates for for this month we have one month left of Warcry. um so we're going to get finished there we're going to all play the game see what we think um and then we're going to move on we're going to move on to uh updates for fifth edition because in uh, July, we're going to do the rematch of our very first Tale of Four Gamers, which was the Tale of Four Gamers Warhammer Fantasy Battle 5th Edition. Um, and we've all been updating our armies a bit. So uh, we'll do a little report on that. Maybe look at some heresy. And then maybe at the end of the year, we'll move into the next big one, uh, which is still to be decided. But yes, thank you, everyone who sent things in. Thank you to everyone on Patreon. Um, and thank you to Peachy, who taught me how to play. <laughs> and to you lovely people, the four, the, the other three of the four gamers, uh, as always, you can follow our progress on uh, Instagram and Twitter with tier table, tale of four gamers or TO number four G hashtags. Um, <laughs> and otherwise, be back in a month. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.